day, my beautiful friends. I hope you're having a marvelous day. Patty Dooley here with Tupperware, and today I'm bringing you another recipe. Who loves pasta? Oh, me, me, me. <laughs> pasta loves me, and I love it. So we, we, we are a perfect match. But today I am showing you how to do spaghetti sauce in the microwave stack cooker right here. Absolutely love this piece. If you have heard any of my other videos, you know this is my by far my favorite thing to cook in in the microwave because I can do everything in it from chickens to desserts, you name it, I do it. But today we're going to talk about it for just a second, So if you haven't heard about it before, but it's a thing that you can cook in the microwave, everything from the raw state and uh, do a whole meal at one time. So you have a three quart bottom right there. You have a one and three fourths quart section right here. You have a one and three fourths quart uh, strainer would that allow you to cook meats, which we're fixing to do, uh, steam vegetables, many other things. And then you have a cone that you can use to put in uh, both of these to make a bundt cake, full apart, uh, bread you can do meatloaf just a million things you can do with this you can probably go back on my channel and look in where we have used this but we're not using it today so I'm gonna set that aside but what we are using is the one and three fourths quart and this section here the colander first and then we're gonna mix some stuff up in here in just a little bit so for this recipe and this mind you now these can be your own recipes. It doesn't have to be this exact one. Basically what I'm showing you is how you can cook this without heating up your kitchen, without a long time in the kitchen and everything else and just many things that you can do with the stack cooker. So I wanna set that aside. So like I said, this is a basic recipe. Make it your own, which I'm making it my own a little bit, uh, but you can do whatever you like in your spaghetti sauce. I have a half a pound of Italian sausage, mild, and I have a half a pound of ground beef. So we have to cook this, but first we have to mix some things up to go with that. So let me set this aside. And to this particular recipe, now I've added some things. I've added some bell pepper and some mushrooms. If you don't want them, don't put them in there. That's just that simple but we are going to chop up uh, one stalk of celery one medium carrot and I've just got it cut up in chunks and a half a onion or however much onion you like I'm gonna mix I'm gonna chop this up in the power chef you can go back and check it out because you can mix blend whip puree all kinds of stuff in this thing so I'm gonna put some carrots in here now mind you, be careful when you're doing this, sometimes the blades, they're not sticking, they just get stuck in the, the carrot. So we're going to do a little bit at a time, because these are a hard vegetable. And what I'm showing you here is you can chop tons of things in here. So with, like I said, I've got one carrot, and we're going to give this a couple of pulls, just to get the carrot down a little bit. Okay, so we got that going. Then we're going to add our celery and onion. I'm going to put that in here. This, like I said, one stalk of celery. If you don't like celery, don't put it in there. I have a family member who's allergic to celery. So if they came over, I wouldn't put celery in it uh, for them. And you're probably wondering, Patty, why do you want to make your own spaghetti sauce? I can get a can. <laughs> Sure, we can. We can do that real easy. But if you want to know what's going into your sauce, where your food came from, this is the perfect way to do it. So we're putting the carrots and the celery in here and the onion. And we've got that chopped down. Now I want this fine because we're going to mix it into the, uh, the meat. Now I'm going to add the mushrooms, some bell pepper, and one clove of garlic. If you're like me, you want more, but my family are not 
a biggest garlic lover as I am. Because <laughs> I put garlic in everything I can. So we're going to pull this and chop it down. This is great if you are doing canning, you're making relish. Perfect for that. Throw your cucumbers and stuff in here. Chop that up for your onions put in here. Everything. So there is our carrots, celery, mushrooms. Now if you have uh, finicky kids that don't like particular things, this is an amazing way to get it into their diet and them not even realize they're eating it. <laughs> so I'm going to take the hamburger now and I'm just going to dump this in here. And you know I forgot my spatula so we're going to have to use this. So we are going to set this aside out of the way in our bowl. Now you got to take your hands. You can add a little bit of salt if you want in here to get, you know, kind of get those flavors going. Not much. I just put like a fourth of a teaspoon if that even makes any difference. And I'm just going to mix the, the meat together with the vegetables because we are going to put this in the strainer part the colander part and let this cook. Now you could just lay it on top, chop it down a little bit, chop it down, lay it on top of there and cook it. But I find that it cooks a better flavor doing it this way because then the meat has all of the vegetables in it. You could do this with ground turkey, ground chicken, whatever you like but I just use the, the the sausage stuff there we go my mind just went blank <laughs> it happens a lot around here so I'm gonna take this top off and we're gonna get the one and three fourths quart section and then the colander and then we are just going to take and break this up just to chunks put it in here and then we are going to cook this in the microwave just like this with the top on for about seven six to seven minutes it's average six minutes per pound but i find that it uh, does well on seven because of the vegetables that's in it and even if it's not completely done that's fine because then you can uh, it's still going to cook some more so you can finish cooking it with the rest of the sauce when it comes that time and I mean this makes quite a bit I would suggest if you're real frugal now this is going to feed a large family a good good amount of sauce uh, making a double batch and having half of it for a meal that night and the other half in the freezer because that's what I plan on doing. And mind you now, we're not heating up the house at all. I'm not touching my stove today. None whatsoever. It is not coming on. It's 100 degrees here in Texas. And I'm not going to make it any hotter. So there is our hamburger. It's in the strainer. The bottom section is going to catch the fats and everything that comes off of it when we cook it. So let me rinse my hands off. Got my little bowl of water there. And we're going to put this in the microwave for seven minutes. Now, you may have to adjust your microwave. Every microwave is different, so do that. You know, you may have to play with it a little bit, but once you find the time that works best for you, then use that. So let's put this in the microwave. Okay, I've got that on for seven minutes and I'm going to get a couple of these things out of my way here. And then to the three quart bottom, 
we're going to make the rest of the sauce and then when the hamburger meat is cooked we're going to put that together and then simmer it in the microwave for just a little bit so i got to get back to my recipe here <laughs> i mean everybody uses their phone for recipes so <laughs> We've got a 28 ounce can of crushed tomato. It calls for tomato paste. I don't have any, well I say I don't have any. I've got a little bit left in my squeeze here, but I'm just gonna use a tomato sauce, which is fine. Happens at home. You start to make something and you realize, oh shoot, I am out of one ingredient. So you improvise. So we are gonna just mix this in the three quart bottom while the meat is cooking once you get this into the microwave then you have time to do a salad or whatever it is you want to go with their with your meal and that's what i do so we're going to put this right in here Are going to take and squeeze the rest of this tomato paste like I said it calls for a small can of tomato paste but I was out and this is all I had left and sometimes if you've been working hard all day you don't want to come home and have to run back to the store for stuff so that is all gone and then <laughs> now for the tomato sauce Like I said, it's a nice thing about cooking at your home because you get to adjust the recipe to whatever it is that you like. And if you're wondering, I'm using our Tupperware can opener. It takes the breaks the seal on there. So you don't have sharp edges and things on your can. So we've got this in here. And I'm going to add a little bit of salt. Now, if your tomatoes seem too acidic to you, go ahead and add just a little touch of sugar or honey, a sweetener to it, and it helps that. So this is about a half a teaspoon of salt. That's all I'm putting in there. Then I've got a fourth of a cup of water. It calls for fresh parsley, but I'm, of course, I'm out of fresh parsley. <laughs> So I'm just going to use dried parsley. I'm going to put in three heaping teaspoons of the parsley, maybe four, just like that. And then a teaspoon and a half of oregano. My husband is not crazy over oregano, so if I find if I cut it back to just one teaspoon, he likes it better. Well, shoot. We'll throw some extra in anyway. I'm used to cooking <laughs> the way I like it. <laughs> so now we're just going to take and stir this all together. And we are going to wait for that hamburger meat to be done. And then once that meat is done, we're going to pour that into here. And then we're going to simmer this. Super fast and easy to do at home and like I said uh, you can get the vegetables in here for your kids if they're picky eaters you can fix that I mean make the recipe your own so we've got a few minutes left on the microwave and as soon as that meat is done I will come back and show you how to finish out this recipe so stay right there I'll be right back okay so we are back and it is time to check the meat we let it cook for seven minutes set this aside that meat is done in there I'm gonna hold this up and let you see you can see the juices draining off of here all of the fats and things are going into the bottom section here if you want to save that strain it if you want to get that fat off of it and use some of the broth to add to your stuff that's fine but what we're going to have to do is just kind of break this up a little bit. Just 
Just give it a couple of punches here, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Break it up in there. And all the carrots are cooked in here. You've got your celery in here. You've got your onion, your garlic. I put bell peppers and mushrooms. And my family are not really crazy over mushrooms. They like the taste, but they don't like to eat the big mushrooms, which is fine. I love it myself. But, you know, not everybody does. So we're going to set the grease over here bring this one here the big three quart bottom one and then take our meat and just pour it off into here like I said if you want to strain some of the fat you can see the liquid in there then you can put that back into here just a little bit and then uh, finish cooking it because all of that has flavoring in it as well from the carrots and everything that was in there but you just don't have all the fats in it so now let's stir this up and from here we're going to put this in the microwave back in the microwave if if you think of your microwave like you do your stove if you want it to simmer slow and longer then knock it back down to 50 percent power to give it that slow cook in the microwave to kind of marry the flavors together a little bit longer but if you don't have that kind of time you can cook it on high maybe 70 percent power and it's good to go so we have all of that meat stirred in i don't know if you can see it but this is about halfway up here this is a large amount of spaghetti sauce that you've made we'll have this done in uh, 15 minutes so we're gonna put the top back on and we're gonna put this back in the microwave and we're gonna cook it for about 10 minutes or so to let it kind of cook together the meats done everything's done we're just kind of marrying everything together in there and like I said if you want to make it either sl uh, slow cooking then bump your power down to 50% and extend the time so that way it has time to kind of slow simmer like it would be on the stove. So we're going to put this in and as soon as it's done I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Stay here. Okay we are back. So we let this cook for 10 minutes in the microwave and we're going to take the lid off. Always remember to uh, take the lid away from your face because you do not want the steam coming out of there to harm your face you can see that steam coming up Ooh, hoo, hoo. this smells good yes it does perfect I like to cook by smell because <laughs> if I can smell the seasonings and things that I like in there then I know it's perfect uh, the salt you'll have to adjust on to, according to taste but the flavors uh, now I'm going to pull this up where you can see that meat sauce you can see how thick and nice that is it's not too thick not too runny just perfect let me see if I can turn this over for you like I said this makes about a half a size of this three quart bottom right here so if you're doubling the recipe, you're going to get three quarts of uh, spaghetti sauce. And you can take and put it up in uh, containers and put it in the freezer. And that's what I plan on doing this week. Because that saves you time, saves you money, saves you uh, time in the kitchen. You don't have to heat up the house or anything like that. You're in a hurry. You've already made some of the spaghetti sauce. You can go grab it out of the freezer, pop it in the microwave, thaw it out, warm it up, and cook your pasta. And you are good to go. So, I hope you can see that there. Oh, man. So, when my family gets home tonight, all I have to do is cook my pasta. I will cook that in our Tupperware pasta maker. Absolutely love this thing. 
I have never cooked pasta back in a pot since I've gotten one of these. It's always in the microwave and I'm not heating up my house. So if you don't have one of those, get with me and I'll be able to uh, help you get one. But that is it for our stack cooker today, guys. This is just another thing that you can do with the stack cooker. There are many, many things. I'll try to uh, get a playlist. If it'll be somewhere up there, try to get a playlist of the things that I've done in the past on here for the pasta, uh, for the stack cooker, so you can go back and look at those videos as well. Because we've cooked the whole chicken in here. We've cooked all sorts of stuff in here. Uh, but today we're just doing the pasta so if you'd like to know more about the stack cooker please feel free to comment or you can message me on Facebook and I'll be glad to get with you and tell you more about the pot the stack cooker I'm gonna I'm got pasta on the brain but <laughs> if you're watching this before August it's either 8th or 12th I have to go back and look at my stuff it's on sale the whole thing's on sale so if you're looking to get one, now would be the time. But if after the, the date, and I'll post that at the end, uh, you it'll be full price again. So uh, be sure and get with me to get it on sale right now. The whole stack cooker, everything I showed you. So you guys, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. <laughs> if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe because I'm coming out with recipes and sales and stuff all the time. And share it with your friends share all share just share just share i love it when people share so you guys be blessed and i will see you soon bye